Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And this is the uh, Top Don Jump Surge JS2000. This means its peak amperage is 2000 for uh, special starting conditions or apparently even without a battery. People have managed to start cars, um, you know, overriding uh, the onboard battery. But I wanna talk more about the philosophy behind something like this rather than, you know, going out and starting up my car. They do start cars. They will start up to 35 cars, apparently, if you do the numbers. But here in Montana, there are some other concerns. Now, uh, Top Don asked me if I wanted to take one of their their um, jump starters for a, a spin, and I was I, like, yeah, they're sure. They offered me the initially the JS1200, which is a smaller version of this, which is fine, and I thought about it. I've got another small one, but I've also run into problems with that small one. And I want to talk, and that's here in Montana in less than ideal conditions. So that's what I want to talk about here. If you are under primarily ideal conditions, you're probably just fine. Um, but occasionally out here in Montana, we run into less than ideal conditions. The, the temperature range of this thing is 104 on the high end, which is easy to hit, you know, especially in an enclosed car, because it's not like you leave this in your shop and then go get it when your car doesn't start. The second thing is on the low end of 14 degrees. We've had 14 degrees this month. In fact, this week, uh, when I, as I'm filming this, part of, the, of our interstate system here is still shut down due to uh, cold weather, or due to, to snow. We've had a ton of snow this month. Anyway, so if we start out, let's take a look at the, uh, the idea of beginning our journey with 100%. If we start with 100% here, and you can see it's lit up, that's great. Over time, both just sitting and, um, and just aging, this thing will lose some of its efficacy, just a little bit. Um, in fact, I bet you could start a car after a year. I think they recommend you charge it up or top it off maybe once a month or so. Um, but in my opinion, or my experience, these things have lasted um, you know, tremendously long, um, even though they've been neglected and stuck under a car seat or something. So we start out there, we're gonna lose a little. Then the temperature can affect this, and that's both heat, um, and that's heat cycling, which means it gets really hot during the day, goes down, hot during the day, goes down, you know, over weeks, months, um, as this thing just sits and waits in case you need it. That can degrade the battery a little bit. Another thing is, this is inviting us to uh, fire up a couple of USB devices, you know, say phone charging, using it as a battery bank. That, of course, comes out of this number. And that 50% is where we run into trouble. That's when this thing may not um, have the, uh, the, the power that it needs you know, to, to turn over your engine. It should be operated at above 50%. So we've only got this, this, uh, this first two that we're worried about. It is uh, also possible that you might not get the card successfully jumped um, the first time. My old truck, if it sits for months, Sometimes what I have to do, I try jump or try to jump it. it, doesn't work. I end up having to put uh, some starter starter fluid uh, in the carburetor, uh, play with it again. Sometimes I, I think the fuel line gets a little mucky, so I have to pump the accelerator a bunch of times to try to get the the fuel going. It takes a while, and where you know you're not supposed to run more than maybe 10 seconds of turning over the car. That's a lot of juice coming out of this. Now, what if you're trying to do that when it's below zero? You've already got a degraded battery, you've already through time, et cetera. It's really cold. You've got an engine that's fighting you. It isn't just turning over a nice warm engine that's been sitting in the sun. This one's got really sticky lubricant in it. Um, it's just, it's not happy. It's gonna take a while to get stuff flowing. You know, I'm, that's when I need this. And then on top of all of that, if you think about using any of the other features, so uh, this one does have a light. It's not gonna draw a lot, but um, it says it's 300 lumens. I tried measuring it with my Klein light meter. I figure it's about right. Looking at foot candles, I got about, four. anyway, I got, I started playing around trying to see if I could measure stuff like this, because that's why I got that. Um, you can also run an SOS and a strobe. I'm not sure, the strobe, I guess, um, I, you know, I could see if you were limping home, maybe put this in the back window if your car's not operating right, something's wrong, I'm, you know, 
you could actually use this as a signaling device while you're driving. And of course, if you're leaving your car unattended um, or you're uh, you know, way out in the middle of nowhere, something like this is easy to see. And a lot of times the SNR search and rescue will use infrared um, detection equipment and they will pick this up from a huge distance away um, in the night. Anyway, enough of that. So the reason you'd start out with something big enough, you might have a bigger engine, it's cold, this has been sitting, it's old, you've been using it for other things, and you've got to stay, you know, at 50% or more. So that's why I chose this one. The particulars behind these things, there's a lot of them available. Um, the costs are coming down. It's ridiculous not to have one. And if you have a modern car, it's really important uh, because if you use like traditional jumper cables, you're going to end up um, risking an electronics problem with either your vehicle or the vehicle that you're trying to assist because you're using a real uh, kind of sketchy um, output in your, your electron transfusion, if you think about it, um, between the two vehicles. Uh, so something like this not only protects your car, but it protects their car. Um, it, when The way this one hooks up, it's got uh, onboard electronics um, outside the battery, which is, I think, important because you're not compromising anything inside here if there's a problem. This immediately, um, you know, is talking. So if I hook it up to a battery here, it's going to give me an indication. You can see there's blinking. This says correct. If the battery is too low or even, um, you know, dead, which is interesting that you can, you know, use one with a dead battery. Um, it's got a boost mode here and you can push that button in, hold it, it switches. And that's when you get the full 2000 amps. Otherwise it, it seems to scale whatever is necessary. Next thing is if you hook this up backwards, there's apparently like 10 protections inside this thing um, for people who aren't. See that? It's warning me. And this is coming out of this thing. We're not on board the battery. It says it's reversed. Now you might think, well, who'd reverse it? Lots of people reverse it because they were taught in school, you know, if they're still trying to think of their third grade, you know, series and parallel um, circuitry, well, you would hook the red to the black to continue the current. Not what red to red you'd think would short it out. Um, so there are people, and I know some who have, have made that mistake. Um, one thing I'd like to point out if people want to modify these, or maybe if Top Don or other companies want to add some features, first of all, the light is on the opposite end. The light is, is almost like a separate feature. But if you were using the light to try to light this, well, because of the length of these cords, so if I, let me plug that back in. I can't use the cords on the light side. You know, I might have to shine it up on something and, you know, if I really can't see in order to get on the battery because the light's in the opposite direction. Um, another thing is, this is, is a, uh, a product that is notorious for falling down into places in the car because you're trying to balance it and it'll just be hanging by the cables. Um, it would be kind of interesting if they had some something that you could flip out and it would give it a big platform to sit across multiple engine components um, just to make it a little bit easier to work with. Because you really don't have, you know, with a leash a foot long, you really don't have a lot of room, you know, to maneuver this thing around, especially if it's cold, especially if it's windy and dark, and you've got to go back around and start the car from the inside with this thing just sitting somewhere. So I was just thinking about, you know, ways to improve it having played around with these. Um, the last thing I want to point out, this does have this DC out. Uh, apparently for running other uh, components, you can get an accessory that makes like a fake cigarette lighter um, or power port. So you can run other things there. But overall, um, tremendous quality, excellent. You've got to have one of these. This one, the prices are coming down. This one comes in a, a real solid box. Um, zip zip pouch if you want to use it uh, with that. It's um, available uh, on Amazon right now. These are less than uh, well under a hundred bucks right now, which is pretty incredible for a good solid uh, jump pack. And I appreciate Top Don sending this. I do think that um, the uh, the use of these things 
is going to start expanding well beyond jumps, jump packs, where instead of getting a phone battery, just get one of these. Um, and in fact, I would imagine that maybe some additional features might be built into these over time, because what it is is a giant chunk of power. So now we're at the question of what could we do if you've got a big, powerful battery? Um, I've even thought about just supplanting my other um, power requirements uh, or power sources um, overlanding with jump starters because the, they don't, the other things don't jump start engines. And as I've said in other videos, I wish Milwaukee made one so I could use like my wheel, Milwaukee top off or, or just some little component on top of a Milwaukee battery that would jump a car. Instead, I'm going the other direction now thinking, how can I use this to run other things and then get some good quality jump pack um, batteries? Um, but anyway, the philosophy, you know, is over time, you know, you're going to need, um, you're going to need juice. And there are a lot of things challenging that. Um, plus, if you got more than one car, a larger car, the car's got uh, routine problems. I mean, if it really has a bad battery or bad alternator or something, you may be using this over and over again. Um, and you're not possibly going to be able to charge it in the car, or at least, um, in between uses. So that's my thoughts on this this uh, Top Don Jump, sh Jump Surge JS2000. You can also look at the JS1200. Definitely uh, a quality product and I would highly recommend um, if you've got an old smaller one and you think that's good enough, really think about how the philosophy behind these things is changing and then the prices are coming down. So anyway, with that, Doc out.